Hey, this is Jake here, and right behind me you see a hinged tree. And there seems to be far too many, quote, experts on YouTube that can't wait to tell you all the things that are wrong with hinging trees. Well, I'm going to show you some video that I took right here on my farm where Mother Nature tipped all kinds of trees over and kept them alive when I started my habitat journey. I was always looking for ways to make things better, more attractive to deer. Embedding, security, early successional growth, browse. Mother Nature often shows you how to do that. And for the most part, all I've ever done is try to mimic what I see naturally taking place. But I'm going ahead and using a chainsaw and equipment and doing it where I want it, how I want it, when I want it. And when you have all kinds of conditions, droughts, heat, cold, hot, you have to work with what you're being dealt. So I hope you enjoy this video. And maybe you'll end up getting a couple of nuggets that you can use on your farm to make your hunting and your habitat better. A late February ice storm plus two heavy wet six to eight inch snowfalls by march 10th was just too much weight for many of our trees in our yard and throughout the property it was way more than they could handle causing some to snap like pretzels and others to pull their roots over keeping them alive this is a before and after comparison of the same area from late march to early August. I'm not sure if some of these anti-hinge cutting guys on YouTube just don't notice the details of what really occurs to woodlots in North America during our spring, summer, fall, and winter storms. Or they just want to convince you that their narrative is the answer. Regardless, it's a good idea to always use discernment of who you follow and especially when hiring a habitat consultant. If I go back to this one photo of natural storm damage there really isn't a whole lot of difference between how this looks at this point is when you start notching and falling and hinge cutting designated deer walkways holes through the thick treetops and openings and alcoves for deer to see into once they're inside of this cover. Mother Nature is pretty darn good at creating side cover, hideaways, and deer movement tunnels on her own. It only makes sense to me to try to mimic and duplicate these areas in locations that we feel comfortable building them in. It's not that hard to do. It just takes a day or two of chainsaw work some creativity and a little deer movement observation knowledge on your part and you can build the security and movement zones that your local deer will utilize often. Here's a location that currently is a summertime bedding area that started out as a hinged screen well over a decade ago. Throughout the years as more early succession and regeneration grew tighter to it, the deer started using this as a travel and movement tunnel and recently took it over for summertime bedding. I'm never really surprised when areas that I design end up being used differently by the local deer. In some situations, I have to remove the bedding that they've taken over because it's just too close to where I exit and enter stands. Other locations, that they take over for bedding, I just go ahead and enhance it and learn to work around it. Soon the snows will be leaving. We'll be thinking about food plots and planting. Right now is when to plan a few weekends of your TSI and bedding area projects so you can get them completed ahead of the spring rush. As great as planting food plots are and can be for attraction and your property's holding power, 
It's what you do in your woodlots these next three to four months that will really add some spark into your velvet footage and this fall's predictable buck movement patterns. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Don't fall for the expert's hype. In delaying or questioning what needs to get done to enhance and improve this fall's hunting success, they are not in charge of your destiny, you are. Good luck and good habitat.